Hello, my beautiful people. This is Kristen. Welcome to my channel. This is a moment of sanctuary where I share a story of where I have seen the supernatural encountering the ordinary, teaching us, or at least me, some grand lessons in life that I like to share and to help others remember or to reflect upon or to be inspired by, maybe feedback to me ones that you remember or recall. We can have dialogue about that. And even though these are kind of a lot of my least favorite videos that I upload, they're kind of my favorite. So thank you for being here and for allowing me to take time to share this. Today's is a really favorite story of mine. It's kind of a longer backstory in that back in 2003, less than a year after I just started my job, the church that I was serving became introduced to an opportunity to become a partner of running an orphanage and later on a hospital in Bo, Sierra Leone. And this was an adventure that we voted, embraced, and have partnered with now for um, 16 years. So it has been a grand adventure. A lot of things have changed in that. It was originally established due to the Civil War that happened in the 90s in Sierra Leone. If you saw Blood Diamond with Leonardo DiCaprio, there were, that was fictitious, but based on the actual events that were going on there, there was a need for an orphanage for support for a lot of the children that were left behind due to this war. And fortunately, that has now had enough time past that it's evolving. But one of the critical things was a hospital was established for the medical care for not only the children there, but for the community. And it became a leading place that was particularly focused on mothers and saving the lives of mothers because they were perishing at an alarming rate due to childbirth and just not having proper care. So that was something that was very, very tangible and easy to see the benefit from. And since 2007, I had been working diligently to try to get a youth team over to serve, to play with the children, to run a program for them and their education and just love on them and just get introduced for our youth to see what was going on in this country. So it took until 2014 before we were green lighted, had our training, a year long of training. We were ready to go two weeks prior, Ebola was sweeping across the entire continent and first it wasn't in Sierra Leone and then it was and then two weeks before we were to fly in the first case of Ebola came to bow obviously we could not go at that point we had 21 people that were going to go over we put it on immediate hold and knew that we would go sometime in the future but after the CDC had cleared it and all this. So I did have several that had just graduated high school and several other who were rising seniors that said, we're not sure, you know, it'll be at least a year before we can go. We're not sure we'll be available to go at that point. So I said, well, let's do an alternate trip. United Airlines, who had our plane tickets, was very, very gracious, didn't charge us a fee. They said, we'll transfer them to some other place that we fly. So we needed to go somewhere United flew. I called a couple organizations that I had worked with in the past that I trusted because obviously I didn't have a lot of time to build relationships or prepare. And 20, it's 48 hours later, two days later, I gathered everybody who was interested together and I said, we have two options. One, we can go with this awesome organization back to back. They've got an orphanage that they're supporting in Monterey, Mexico. They've got openings for us. Um, the eight youth and two adults, which is what it ended up being there was a spot for us, we can go. No extra money needed, we'll just transfer everything. Or YouthWorks will have an opening for us in Vancouver, Canada. We can go and do a wide variety of community work there. And it's, you know, Canada is not that far out of our comfort zone in some ways, but it's another country and it'll be a good experience. And it's a significant ways from Virginia where we live, so it'll be an adventure. And they talked about it very briefly, very briefly, and said, you know, we are really shook by this Ebola thing and kind of fearing for our safety. And we don't think Mexico's a safe place. We, we think that's there is so much crime there. Let's go to Vancouver. And I said, no problem. 
I, this will be a great trip. I changed everything over. Less than two weeks later, we were flying to Vancouver. And since we got to the airport and it was all students who were at least 17, most of them 18, 19 years old, I looked at the other male leader and I said, John, we're not here. We're not on this trip. And I handed the folder over to them and said, you know, if an emergency, we're here, but really we're not. You know, and a lot of them hadn't flown by themselves or, you know, they're like, well, what gate? Well, do we have a transferring connection? Well, how do we find our rental car? How do we know which one it is? And they had to look through and we'd kind of help them if they asked us questions, but really they problem solved it and went off and they loved it. They had this great adventure. We had because of the date transfer we had our free time at the beginning of the trip so we said great how do we find our hotel how do we find the park and the museum that we want to visit how do we go find the totem poles where are we going to get the admission to the aquarium that we want to see so off we went on this great great time we went to the aquarium when we came out of the aquarium even though it was broad daylight nice sunny day our van had been broken into and seven of our bags had been taken, including the leader bag that had all of our passports and all of our paperwork for the mission that was to start the next day. So immediately they were like, call our parents. And then John and I are like, nope, hold on. We'll let you do that if that's the decision you want, but I, I appreciate that. Let's think this through a minute. What, what do you, what do your parents want to know when you call? And they're like, that we're okay? Okay, is everybody okay? Yes, yes, everybody's okay. Okay, great. I said, now what do your parents want to know? And they was like, what do they need to do so it can be fixed? I said, great, what do we need to do? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out and then we'll call your parents. And they're like, okay, so what do we need to do? Call the police? Great, let's call the police. Does 911 even work in a foreign country? We don't know. One of them suggested that we go right back inside the aquarium, which was only a hundred yards or a couple hundred yards at most away, and see that they had to have security or you know maybe even some knowledge about what was going on. Maybe this had happened to other people. Even better idea, we went inside, they found somebody, we explained what was going on. They said, yes, unfortunately, indeed, this does happen, that there were several gangs that made this a common practice. They targeted rental cars because all rentals have a particular marking on the license plates that we weren't quite aware of. So I don't know if this, that's still the case, but if it is, be wary. You get targeted that way. So take your valuables with you. Fortunately, most of them had carried their wallets inside for souvenirs and all of that kind of goodness. So we all had our driver's licenses. We just did not have our passport. So that helped the process. Then the parents had to fax over birth certificates and some other documentations as well as new forms for releases for the trip. So we gathered up all this information, got our police report, they found where the American Embassy was. We got the hours we were going to have to go the next day because this was a Sunday that this was now happening on. And we needed to go on Monday when they had their regular operating hours so that we could start processing new passports to fly home at the end of the week. So we checked into our missions. We got all situated. We were fine. We had to miss the first day of mission work to actually go to the embassy and process our passports. But then we got back on the trip. We had a wonderful time serving the community and did a lot of good. But the, at the end of the week, when we sat around our little circle and reflected, I told them, and I still believe this firmly, that I don't know which one, and maybe all eight of them, but someday there will be a crisis that comes up. And because of this experience where they were in charge and they figured out what to do and handled it, they will be the one to step up and handle whatever it is that goes on in the future. That this is how we are prepared to do the things that we are called to do. That we might not see it or we may even see something as really bad or negative or frightening. But in the end, these are the very things that are used for glory and goodness and reconciliation. 
And the second thing goes very along with that. It was a deep, powerful lesson to myself. And I think kind of a little humor of a God that actually knows us a little better than we know ourselves. Because here we were not wanting to go to Mexico because of the crime. And this is the very thing that happens to us the first 24 hours that we are in Canada, which they had deemed to be completely safe, right? Every single one of our hometowns can be dangerous if we don't use common sense or we are in the wrong place at the wrong time. We have to have some common sense and make some good healthy choices but not live in fear and not live in a prejudice that maybe is harmful. Mexico is a beautiful country with much to offer and though there is crime just like any place else there are ways to go there and serve or to visit or to interact that are the time and place to do so. So it was a remembrance to fully embrace wherever it is, however it is that you are called to help, called to serve, called to aid somebody else, try not to be afraid. Be wise, but do not be fearful because you may be that person's answer. So on this day, I hope that you remember that you have been fearfully and wonderfully made and may you lean into those own moments of sanctuary for yourself. Blessings on your day.